In Activity 2, Electrical Symbols, students learn to use symbols to identify the parts of a circuit. They first draw and interpret circuit diagrams, then build circuits from simple circuit diagrams. Finally, students compare the brightness of bulbs in different circuits. You will need the following materials from the kit. Activity Sheet 2, D-cell batteries, battery holders, bulb holders, number 48 flashlight bulbs, electrical clips, and 15 centimeter long pieces of insulated copper wire. To prepare for the activity, make a copy of Activity Sheet 2 for each student. Cut and strip additional pieces of wire so that each team will have four 15 centimeter pieces. Each team of two will need two batteries, two battery holders, four electrical clips, four pieces of wire, two bulbs, two bulb holders, and three new 15 centimeter pieces of insulated copper wire with the ends cut and stripped. Before the activity, practice placing batteries and electrical clips into the battery holders. To do this, place the clips in first so that the Fonstock clip points to the outside. Then push the battery down into the holder. To attach the wire, push the tab on the Fonstock clip so that the loop sticks out and place the end of a wire through this loop and release the tab. When correctly assembled, the end of the wire will be held securely in place. To begin the activity, review closed circuits with the class. Emphasize that the path of the electric current is from one end of the battery back to the other end of the battery. Then draw a battery and bring students' attention to the positive and negative ends as you draw a plus and a minus on the battery case next to the appropriate end. The positive side of the battery is usually marked and always on the side with the nib. The negative side may not be marked, but it is always the side opposite the positive side. Next, inform students that battery terminals are the positive and negative ends of the battery. Explain that in a closed circuit, the current flows from the negative end of the battery through the parts of the circuit back to the positive end of the battery. Point to your drawing of the battery and tell the students to watch as you draw two wires and a bulb to make a circuit. Ask students, how could we draw this quicker and easier? Students may suggest using symbols to represent the different components of the circuit. Explain that there are many benefits to using symbols. One benefit is that the symbols are standardized so that everyone understands which component is being represented. Another benefit is that no one has to be particularly artistic to draw the symbols. Draw and identify the symbols of a battery, including positive and negative terminals, a wire, and a bulb. Explain that the longer horizontal line in the battery symbol depicts the positive terminal and the shorter horizontal line depicts the negative terminal. Next, introduce the term circuit diagram to students as a drawing of a circuit using symbols and then draw a circuit diagram next to the symbols. Challenge students to trace the path of the electric current through the circuit shown in the circuit diagram. Make sure that students begin at the negative terminal of the battery symbol and proceed through the circuit elements back to the positive terminal of the battery symbol. Then, ask a volunteer to assemble the circuit shown in the circuit diagram and test it for everyone to see. Distribute Activity Sheet 2 to each student and the materials to each team. Bring attention to the circuit diagrams of circuits A and B. Point out that in circuit diagram B, two symbols for a battery are placed next to each other to indicate two connected batteries. Further explain that two battery symbols are sometimes drawn with a short vertical line depicting the wire that connects the two batteries. Ask students, how would you draw a circuit diagram for a circuit that has two batteries and two bulbs? Students may guess that two symbols for bulbs are drawn next to each other with a connecting line, which represents a third wire. Tell students to draw their ideas on their activity sheets. Students should trace the path of the electric current through each of the three circuit diagrams at the bottom of the activity sheet. Next, demonstrate for the class how to place batteries in the holders and how to attach the wires to the electrical clips, and then explain that in order to build a two-battery circuit, they should connect the negative end of one battery to the positive end of another battery. It is important that to make only one negative to positive connection between the two batteries. Making two of these connections at once will overheat the wire and drain the batteries. Instruct students to construct these three circuits, represented by the circuit diagrams. After students have finished assembling the circuits, ask, what did you observe about the brightness of the bulbs in each of these three circuits? Students should respond that each of the bulbs glowed at a different brightness. Then ask, which circuit had the brightest glowing bulb? Why do you think this was so? 
Students should note that Circuit B had more batteries, which provided more current and made the bulb glow brighter. Circuit C also had two batteries, but the two bulbs had to share the current they provided, resulting in a duller glow. Finally, inform students that in the next activity, Series and Parallel Batteries, they will learn about different battery arrangements and circuits. To conclude the activity, have students return all batteries, battery holders, electrical clips, bulbs, bulb holders, and wires to the kit. For science background, reinforcement activities, curriculum connections, and information about the Delta Science Reader, please consult your DSM Teacher's Guide.